Welcome back to Get Decked, where we review games through the lens of the Steam Deck. I'm Zep, and today's game is 2D tactical roguelite card battler Shogun Showdown. In Shogun Showdown, the player is tasked with defeating the titular Shogun by cutting a bloody path through his assortment of minions. The player assembles and upgrades an arsenal of weapons and moves, each with different ranges and effects, with also the option to apply new effects to these attacks, like freezing or poisoning enemies. As you journey across the islands of a fragmented feudal Japan, which is rendered in a stylish pixel art style, you'll encounter stages made up of a series of battles with a boss awaiting you at the end of each one. Between fights, you choose weapons and upgrades with more available to purchase from the shops you find along the way. Expanding your weapon set, upgrading them, and becoming stronger and stronger like a snowball of death, careening towards your end goal. The combat takes place on a series of tiles across a 2D plane, with the main crux being prioritization and positioning. The key here is deciding which enemy to take on when and in what order. Enemies spawn in waves during the round. Some rounds spawn a new enemy every other turn, turning fights into a frantic dash towards the finish line. The enemies are visually distinct. You can tell at a glance exactly which enemies will strike from a distance and who will charge up to close the gap and adjust accordingly. Health is your most precious resource here. With heals especially at the higher difficulties few and far between, knowing when to play it safe and when to play aggressive is key. Time isn't a pressure here, it only advances as you move, assign moves, up to three at a time, or execute attacks. The game therefore is encouraging you to be strategic. I personally love these sorts of battlers. It definitely shares some DNA with the likes of Slay the Spire, but with an added layer of movement and positioning. There is nothing more satisfying than wiping out all of your foes with a well thought out stack of attacks. Before starting your run, you pick from four characters, each with different abilities which change how the game is played. My character of choice is the Shadow and his ability to phase through enemies. His drawback is he can't position himself accurately as he traverses all tiles ahead or behind of him when he moves. This means some attacks are inherently difficult for him to use, but what he lacks in accuracy he makes up for in raw mobility. His playstyle can draw the player into being overconfident, placing yourself in the midst of a gang of enemies with all your powers on cooldown and without a step two in your plan is a surefire way to get yourself killed. Progression takes the form of cards purchased from a merchant before entering a run. These cards don't appear in your inventory once purchased, they are added to a reward pool for completing each area, with the option to reroll cards which don't suit your current run. The bosses the game throws at you are a lot of fun, each with their own unique combat scenario. Maybe you're fighting twins who share a health bar, maybe two statues that cannot be moved, taking away any movement shenanigans you've been relying on. Maybe it's a scarecrow who's dodging your attacks while sending his minions to deal with you. I found each boss fun and engaging, and not just another guy with more health. One of my only nitpicks that I have with the game is when it comes to the overworld map. You can base your decisions on which paths to take, um, on what rewards are available to you down each path, but what this system is kind of missing is a risk and reward element. It would add to the experience to have the option to bet on yourself and charge head on into greater danger knowing you'll receive better gear or better rewards. Instead I found myself somewhat going through the map unconsciously knowing that there wasn't any real bad choices to be made here and that I wouldn't be missing out on much by taking the wrong path. On to the part of the video where we talk about deck performance and gameplay specifically. Two videos in and it's time to build a bit of a pattern. It's my opinion that the deck was almost designed with roguelites and roguelikes in mind. These games are broken into rounds which last between 20 and 40 minutes. They play really well into the portability of the deck. Shogun Showdown is no exception, with its turn-based combat and no time constraints. It's a great game for multitasking. The only stumbling block I hit was around the controls. They can be a little bit fiddly to begin with and take some time to get used to, but once you do, they work just fine. After putting it down for a week or two and picking it back up again for part of this review, I slipped back into the control scheme with no problem. You may find the first few runs frustrating, but stick with it, it will click. 
battery wise, look at the gameplay on screen. You can tell this isn't hogging much battery power. Expect about three to four hours of gameplay with the base settings. Probably more if you drop the FPS to turn the game into cardboard cutouts bumping into each other. Each run lasts about 30 minutes to complete, so that's six to eight runs in one sitting on one charge, which is pretty good. These turn-based battlers are great returns on investment when it comes to battery life. Overall, I'm a fan of Shogun Showdown, as you can probably tell. It's a game that rewards foresight and planning and punishes recklessness. Some of the enemies do feel a bit unfair at times, but if you have the right weapons and tools and plan around them, you can make them all your bitch. Say it. I'm your bitch. The game is well polished and I can't remember hitting a single bug in my couple of dozen hours in it so far. Where my only gripe really centers around the lack of risk and reward when it comes to the pathing, it's really small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. Risk and reward is so rife within the main gameplay that there it isn't too much of a big deal. I would have liked to have seen that theme carry on through to the overworld sections. It's really the mark of a quality game that after a few dozen hours, that's the only gripe I can really come up with or anything I would even adjust or change. Everything else is, is spot on. The game is solid and at 10 quid in the UK or $10 in the US, I think that's an absolutely fair price. As I always mention, this value for money only improves during one of the seasonal Steam sales, like the one that's going on right now, if you're watching this on day of release. Have you played Shogun Showdown? Who's your favorite character? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this review insightful, consider hitting that like button or subscribing for more. You can also find us live on Twitch where we play a lot of the games that we cover on here and more. Link in the description below. If you're seeing this on release, we're playing Rogue Trader today. So if you'd like to see how that game plays um, before we do a review on it for the deck, um, come along. Have an excellent day and I'll see you next time. Keep on decking.